welcome to the Cumbria Chamber of Commerce podcast, your weekly update of business news and issues from around Cumbria. Find out how we support new business and help existing businesses to grow and flourish at cumbriachamber.co.uk. Now, here's the Chamber's Business Engagement Manager, Julian Whittle, with this week's episode. Hello, I'm here with Paul T, the Chamber's Digital Development Manager, to talk about changes to WordPress, the most popular online publishing platform used by thousands of Cumbrian businesses to create and operate their websites. Tell us then, Paul, what's happening with WordPress? Well, where do I begin, Julian? Uh, This is the biggest change to the WordPress interface since it launched in 2003. I've been using WordPress since 2008, if my memory serves me correctly. Right. And uh, I think it's fair to say that anybody who's used WordPress, they're very used to the, mm. the interface that you use. So uh, it's going to be a massive change, and they're launching what's called the Gutenberg Editor. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's very <laughs> ominous, isn't it? Uh, basically, it means the whole interface when you log into WordPress as a user, not as a as a customer. It, the, hopefully, the website will appear exactly the same. But yeah. what goes on behind the scenes when you're using the website as an administrator, that's going to change completely. So WordPress say, uh, and I'm quoting their words here, the entire editing experience has been rebuilt, which is always worrying, isn't it, um, for media-rich pages and posts. Experience the flexibility that blocks will bring, whether you are building your first site or you write code for a living. So that's the, the sort of the formal pitch. Right. But beneath those glossy words uh, and that sort of showbiz style, uh, I think there are many gremlins lurking to, to surprise Cumbrian businesses. Now, at the moment, the Gutenberg has just been made available in the last update of WordPress, assuming that you update your WordPress site regularly, as you should do. It's been made available as a plugin, so it's there to play with. But this is going to be forced upon us when WordPress version 5 is rolled out. So why is this such a big deal for Cumbrian businesses? Well, you mentioned it in your brief introduction that um, hundreds, if not thousands, of Cumbrian businesses use WordPress. I mean, worldwide, it's estimated about 75 million websites using WordPress right now. Um, I I found a little survey from a a firm called W3Techs. They reckon about 30% of all websites um, use WordPress. So that is mm. a substantial number of websites. Mm. If we extrapolate that to Cumbria, mm. it's going to cause yeah. a lot of headaches throughout yeah. the county for local businesses. Now, I know this because I um, I do work for the Chamber of Commerce. I've run many, many training sessions over uh, about five years ago. I think I did my first WordPress training session for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and also I work with Growth Hub Abesis clients. So, I, And I'm often building websites with them. So I you know, I know firsthand how many Cumbrian businesses are using WordPress sites. Now, they use WordPress in different ways. So a lot of the time I'm working with sole traders or solo operators who are building their own WordPress sites, and they do everything. They, they install it, they design it, they make the posts and everything like that. And other people, uh, you know, as you get bigger companies, um, the site is, is built and managed by a, a web design company. Yeah. And then perhaps all they're doing is they're just writing the post actually yeah. much as you do on our on our chamber Great. insight so this is yeah. going to affect you Julian too I'm afraid this is the bad news yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay attention <laughs> but it, it is going to change your workflow entirely yeah. but I know there are other much bigger businesses for instance whereby um, everything would be done by uh, you know an agency or a, or a you know a web development company so I know this is going to affect people in different ways but however your WordPress site is operated whether you're the sole trader or the big company you you have to be aware of these changes um, because the, you know there is there is the potential that it might break your site and at the very least and this is how it's going to affect you on a day-to-day basis mm. basis Julie it's going to affect your workflow when you come to write your chamber insight article mm. it ain't going to look the same as it did last time you were in there so somebody like me is going to have to show you uh, what to do with it so everybody needs to be aware of this everybody needs to prepare for it and my advice is don't bury your head in the sand so how is the changeover being staged I mean how soon will this hit Well, we don't have a precise date for this yet. Uh, It's a moving target. Um, It's going to come with the release of version 5, and at the moment we're in WordPress version 4 point something point something, so 
it, it, it moves along. But it's been gathering like storm clouds on the horizon. I can't remember when I first read about this. It was in, where are we now? It must have been 2017 that I first read about that. And I clocked it and I thought, oh, you know, pl- mm. pl- please don't do this. We're, 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 we're quite happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're happy yeah. with it. If it and ain't it, broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, I, and I, I saw this and I, I know it's been coming for some time. And then... Um, <laughs> For in the last uh, update of WordPress, if you've if you've installed it on your site, you'd have seen that you've now got a choice between using Gutenberg as a plugin or going back to what's called the classic editor, which is the one we all know, cherish, and love, or we will do shortly when this change comes in. Um, so you can actually, if you want to, you can try Gutenberg uh, right now. Um, when I first found out about the changes, they were penciled in. Um, as coming in the mm. first half of 2018, we've escaped that so mm. far. Because I remember warning, you know, Robert the Chamber and saying, "You just need to know this is coming. I'm not sure when it's going to hit us yet." Um, so we still don't have a precise release date. This plugin version has been released, so people are playing with it now. The WordPress team are inviting feedback and responses. I can, I can only imagine <laughs> what, what, what well, those will be like. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I should point out that, you know, I should, I, I must, I've got to try and remain positive with this because, you know, the WordPress team are saying it's not supposed to be breaking anything, um, you know, and they are reassuring us that support for existing WordPress functionality will remain. Mm-hmm. So I've got to be careful not to do a chicken lick in mm-hmm. the sky's about mm-hmm. to fall in on this. Mm-hmm. So well, why are they doing it? Well, you know, I can tell you this because um, yesterday I spent an afternoon with a Beesus client who mm-hmm. wanted a, a website, mm-hmm. and this is very much my thing. And uh, I, I tend to specialise in teaching WordPress because I, I know and love it. But, but in actual fact, I, I just recommended to this particular gentleman uh, because he didn't have uh, geeky technical skills. And I always assess whether you know what people's appetite for this stuff is. Some yeah. people glaze over yeah, when you yeah, when you mention yeah. tech, and other people have an appetite for yeah. it. And I just said to him, "Look, I'm going to build your site for you in something called Wix, and Wix and Squarespace are probably the best known um, site website builders." And within our two hour session. I managed to build for this gentleman uh, a website for his business mm. um, from scratch for free. And, and so Wix and Squarespace, because they allow you to do this, you, they allow people with no geeky skills to create very mm. nice looking websites mm. in a matter of minutes, in an hour in my case mm. yesterday. And, and so um, with WordPress, when I'm talking to people about it, I always say to them, look, the, the problem with WordPress is always going to be the installation. That's the bit where you're going to have to get someone like me, mm. someone like a design agency, they're going to have to do that geeky bit. But once it's installed, you can run it's it. brilliant. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. brilliant, yes. And it's very good for future-proofing in the way that... Mm. I mean, I'm not going to get into the argument about Wix and Squarespace now, but I would suggest that they, they, they get you started. But over the long term, they're possibly not the best things to use. That's a whole mm. separate argument. Um, but I think there's a lot of pressure from these free site builders that people use. And I, I meet so many businesses in Cumbria now who are using Wix and Squarespace. And, and I'm not snobby about this, although I prefer WordPress for, for many reasons. My bottom line for Cumbria businesses is I would rather you on were on the web in any way that you can yes, manage. Yeah. My bottom line is, Julian, that I want you on the web. The other reason that WordPress is having to do this is that since it was launched in 2003, of course, in 2003, I don't know about you, but I was on a Nokia phone, I think, in 2003. Uh, We didn't have smartphones. And things have changed so much. And, and, and if you want, you know, I guess WordPress has become a bit of a Frankenstein's monster mm. in that they've adapted and built it. This is why it's mm. so wonderful. It, it's, it's managed to adapt to all these changes. So when you build a website, say so you've got to think about mobile devices, you've got to think about tablets, you're recording this on a mm. tablet. Okay. People have so many different devices, they have to be responsive and mobile friendly. So in short, WordPress has got to stay relevant in the web marketplace and move with the times and that means in its technical infrastructure and also for users. What sort of disruption could this cause? Well I want to shed a tear here Julian I mean I don't know really where Mm. to start and again I don't want to be like chicken licking with this Mm. I I, I need to be positive because it's coming anyway but um, I've got to reiterate before I get into this bit that this is not supposed to be breaking anything but I, I think it will substantially change your workflow. And, and you know, you're an, an excellent example of this, right. is that you're not, you're not geeky, but mm. you, I, I do the geeky stuff mm. on the website. Mm. And, I've, and you write blog posts in WordPress for the chamber. 
it's going to completely change what you do, yeah. and you ain't gonna like it. <laughs> I thought I better oh, deliver that. that Paul, yeah. <laughs> I thought I better deliver that news on microphone, actually, so that you give me a polite response. <laughs> no, it, it, it's gonna be a bit like. You know when you go to the supermarket and you know they've got um, a granary loaf in there somewhere, they've changed yeah, the shelves yeah. around, you know it's in there somewhere, but can you find it? And, and that's kind of really, I think, in a basic way what, what's going to happen with WordPress. Now, um, the other thing about this is that many people and, and, and many sole traders within Cumbria uh, do this. They use free themes and plugins because they're running on a, on a tight budget. Now, when I do training, I always caution against this. I always say to people, it's best to use themes and plugins that have a free version and a paid version, mm-hmm. because if they've got a paid version, there is a way of remunerating a developer for the work that they do on that on that theme or plugin. Um, and I don't know about you, Julie, but I don't work for free, and nor should developers. Yeah. So what what I think will happen is that a lot of people who've got three free themes and plugins, if Gutenberg breaks that or creates problems, they say, well, I, I don't make money out of mm. this. Why would I want to completely recode this? And so, therefore, the theme or plugins that you've got may break or may become obsolete. So, again, it's always a good strategy to go for paid things on WordPress um, because there's an incentive for somebody to do yeah. the work. Yeah. yeah. Now, massive players, I mean, I, I must mention this because I know also a lot of people use uh, the WooCommerce plugin for their e-commerce on WordPress, and it's, a, it's great. It's a brilliant service, WooCommerce. Um, the massive players like WooCommerce, see, they've got the resilience, the coders, the teams, the income to code around this. So I think they'll just take it in their stride, and it's just one of the, the hazards of being in business, I guess, that things change. But for non-techie users, it's going to require some retraining. So if you have people, I think you know many businesses in Cumbria have this, where people like, like you, you're, you're mm. a prime example of this. They, they write the posts, they can create great looking content without having to know anything about all the techie stuff. That's going to change for them entirely. So a casual WordPress user mm. is not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy to just jump in and get on with Gutenberg. Right. Um, you're going yeah. to need some training on it. So you know, at the very least, you need to be aware of that. The other thing about WordPress and the reason that I've recommended it for so long is that with WordPress, if there's something you want to do on a website, and, and so long as it's something that a reasonable number of other people want to do, mm-hmm. um, there will be a plugin or a solution for it. So uh, you can always solve an issue mm-hmm. with WordPress. And, and, it, and it has this wonderful community around it. It's what's called an open source software, in which sort of people contribute to it and collaborate. And I'm Worried that it's going to um, fracture that community, that many people will just break off. And, you know, I have to include myself in this. I've used WordPress for years. If it becomes too complicated for me, I will find something else yeah. to replace it. Yeah. Now, I, well, you've, you've used the new platform. How did you get on with it? <laughs> okay, so I did a long, sustained blog post, and this was on my own uh, personal blog in my own business. Um, so th- the first thing I'm going to say to you is, it took me a lot longer to write that blog post than it should have done because mm. I was messing around. Now, WordPress makes a big deal of these blocks. And to me, um, I, I, I like, I partially like the blocks, but I hate them for writing. So if you could imagine you're writing at the moment when you write a blog post mm. in WordPress, you write it, I, I always say to people, it's like mm. writing a Word document. It's no yes, more it different is, yeah. than writing yeah. a Word document. I agree. You, you bold some bits for the headlines. Yeah. Otherwise, you just write it as mm. a continual... In blocks, Mm. uh, every sentence that you write is going to be in a separate block, Mm. which I think is counterintuitive because, Mm. you know, this is Mm. a journalist. I I come from a journalistic background. Mm. When I write, Mm. you write in flow, Mm. and um, every time I click return, it creates a new block now. So every sentence is in a separate Mm. section. And these blocks are a little bit sort of um, uh, sticky, bit glitchy, if you want. So when you click in them, you're trying to highlight something to make change a spelling mistake mm-hmm. or something. It was slow. Mm-hmm. It was a bit laggy. I, I, it just it just slowed me down. Um, and, and what I'm trying not to do is, is be resistant just because it's changed. So, you know, no, none of us like mm-hmm. change. We mm-hmm. don't like it when things are reorganised. Mm-hmm. I'm trying not to be resistant just because it stops, you know, prevents my workflow. But there were things I loved in it um, and that I think are a great idea. So, for instance, uh, you, you, you and I have had this mm. experience where you've asked me, how do I put a YouTube video mm. into a blog post? Yeah. And I've shown you a little way that I teach people mm. that, that's pretty straightforward mm. uh, t- to work around that. But it does involve you having to look into the code view rather than the, what you see is what you get view. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with the new system, 
uh, you get a little, you just press a little button and you just cut and paste the code into that. You don't have to go away from the what you see is what you get view. Now, for somebody, I mean, you're, you're very adept at this stuff. You learn it very quickly. It's not a problem, is it, with the way I've taught no. it? But in actual fact, if I were teaching somebody who's really scared with this stuff, they would just be able to click a button, mm. cut and paste the YouTube, mm. and they wouldn't ever have to look at the code at all. So that I liked, but we can already do that. We've got mm. plugins and solutions. This is the whole mm. point of what I was saying about mm. the community. People have done this for us already. If I want that kind of functionality, there are plugins like Divi or Elementor or Thrive, which is the one I use, that allow you to do these complex things within the existing WordPress interface. So my question you know, is, was anybody asking for this? And do we need it? And if we wanted that extra functionality, then we'd just get a plugin to do it. Elementor is a free plugin that does this for you already. Uh, Divi is a paid for plugin, but the, the community's done that already. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not keen on that. Um, to try and be positive about it, uh, blocks allow non-developers to sort of create more complex layouts than perhaps they, they might have been oh, able to yeah, do. That's yeah. good. Gutenberg, this is interesting. I was the gentleman I was working with Wix on yesterday was using, a, wanted to use a tablet, mm. and he was unable to edit Wix on a tablet because mm. that's a mobile view of the mm. Wix website. With Gutenberg, in theory, you're supposed to be able to actually edit a WordPress post right. on your mobile yeah. device. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if you were on a train and you'd mm. spotted a spelling mistake that you'd made, not yeah. that you ever make any. <laughs> 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 but but if you if you did yeah. you, you could just go on your mobile phone and do it and that yeah. that's actually you know that's quite cool. a yeah. nice thing to be able to do you yeah. can do stuff on on the on the move um, and then WordPress or, or one of the positive things I've seen is that you've got a lot of white space mm. it's not some people mm. I don't think WordPress is cluttered at all actually I think it's perfect mm. but but actually it just looks white and bare it looks mm. completely sparse when you work in it. Um, the, the other thing that I do like is the fact that you can reuse blocks. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if, if you uh, if you sign off, for instance, all of your articles with, um, you know, written by Julian Whittle, mm -hmm. if you want to contact me, here's my phone number and email mm -hmm. address. Rather than write that a million times, mm -hmm. you could just keep dropping a block in mm -hmm. that has that stored Already, in it. Yeah. Uh, so, that, so that's good. So it's, it's a mixture of good and bad, but predominantly it's going to mess things up. <laughs> So what's everybody else saying about Gutenberg? Is, is this a popular move? Um, no. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I've, I've read around on this, and I, and I said I am, I'm trying to remain open-minded because my view of this always is, and if you work in tech, you know, I've worked with Facebook for years. I built a, face, uh, built a, a software on the platform uh, back in the mid-2000s, and I can remember when Facebook completely changed without warning what they were going to do. It's one of the hazards of building on, on a third-party platform. I learned that business lesson uh, a, a long time ago, and they just changed the rules. Um, so, no, it, it, the, I think most people are saying what I'm saying, which was, was anybody asking for this? Mm. Can't we do this stuff already yeah. with existing plugins? And this is going to be very disruptive. And it, and it feels like it might fracture and break mm. that this WordPress community that's been very happy for a number of years. So, um, yeah, I don't think anybody's asking for it, but it looks like it's going to come. I, I'm, mm. I'm hoping. Um, <laughs> it's a bit like Brexit, the way some people are, you know, with yeah. some people's attitude to Brexit, they're hoping it might not come. That's how I feel about good. <laughs> You know, that it, it might not it might not arrive eventually. Okay. And the chamber's well ahead with this issue. How can Gr Cumbria Growth Hub help with this pool? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say is um, I'll give some general advice and then I'll tell you specifically how we can help. My advice is, is that um, if you have somebody who manages this, you need to be having a conversation with them. If you've got a web company who does this, have a conversation with them and say, have you tested Gutenberg on our website? Is it going to break anything? Mm -hmm. um, I've already done this with the Chamber website. So, for instance, I've put our uh, Growth Hub website into mm -hmm. a test environment where I, nobody else can see it. I've installed it to make sure it doesn't break anything. It didn't break anything on our website, which is fantastic. Um, so I would recommend installing it on a test website. Um, begin to learn the software, particularly if you're in a environment where you have to write fast I mean you, you know you're a great example of this because you're under pressure every week to write five articles you do not want to be messing around with a new interface when this yeah. suddenly yeah. arrives it's good true, to, true. it's going yeah. to slow you right down I mean I'm, I'm telling you now it's going to slow you right down and anybody else not just you everybody mm. me, me everybody it's going to stay, however tech you are so um, I would say make those preparations we can help you uh, with that um, so 
I'm running a webinar, first of all, uh, for uh, the Growth Hub, and I'm going to show a little bit more. Obviously, this is a podcast. It's not visual. On a webinar, I can show you stuff. Uh, and so I'm going to talk you through it, um, mm-hmm. give you an overview of what it means and what it looks like. I'll show you that blog post and talk you through it in the webinar. So uh, that webinar is going to take place on Tuesday, the 2nd of October. It's going to be between 7 to 8 p.m. And you can register for that webinar right now at cumbriagrowthhub.co.uk forward slash briefing. And I know you'll put that on the show notes for this episode if yeah. anybody misses that. Yeah. Right now, what I would say is if you can't attend that webinar live, if you think, you know, that's my shopping night on a Tuesday, uh, please, can you just register anyway? Because what that does is it puts you in the, the database. And then what I will do is I process the replay of that webinar mm. and I'll send it out to you and you can then watch it at your leisure. So yeah. register anyway, uh, whether you can attend live or not. Now, I'm going to also be um, delivering some Gutenberg training, mm. one-day training, mm. where I will I will train you or your staff mm. how to use the new interface. And you know, bearing in mind, I'm, I'm only slightly ahead of everybody else <laughs> with this. I'm yeah. learning it myself. Yeah. But yeah. this is kind of my business. You know, I, I need to be ahead of the curve. I, I'm straight in having to play with it, working out how it works. And, you know, b- being able to advise people. So um, we're, at the moment, we're uh, working on the dates but uh, my first session on that will be the second half of October so what I would say is if you're listening to that thinking I, I need to be there mm. then you need to email uh, Catherine Dunson at the chamber mm. and Catherine's email again I know you'll put this on the show notes mm. is Catherine at CumbriaChamber.co.uk and I should also mention that we're already running a general WordPress trading event on October the 5th just to mention this it's 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. it's a free workshop called build a WordPress website in a day and it's taken taking place at Castle Green Hotel in Kendall. So again, if you want a, a really fast opportunity to just jump on board, we've got that already fixed. And again, email Catherine if you're interested in that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much, Paul. Thank you for listening to the Cumbria Chamber of Commerce podcast. You can find out more about how we're supporting Cumbrian businesses at cumbriachamber.co.uk and cumbriagrowthhub.co.uk. In the meantime, thank you very much for listening and we'll have another episode for you next week.